What else doesn't make you worthy? Your works don't make you worthy. Am I right? If anybody is made worthy by works, then who is worthy to take, to take um, the breaking of bread, right? To, to participate in the breaking of bread. And this is what really irks me about preachers that teach that you have to be worthy by works in order to partake of the breaking of bread because what they mean by that is if you don't have any sin in your life or any sin that you can remember or sin between another person. But let me tell you this, if sin makes you unworthy to, to partake of the breaking of bread and the, and, the, and, the, and the cup, then who is worthy? It's only people that think they're worthy, that think they have no sin in their life. They're the ones taking of the bread and the cup. But isn't that just hypocrisy? If they're saying that you need to, if you have any sin in your life, if you have any unconfessed sin, that you shouldn't partake of the, um, of, of the bread and the cup. Now, is it right to have unconfessed sin? Of course not. Um, and, you know, tonight might be a good night to confess your sin to God, but that's not what makes you worthy to, to partake of the cup. Look at what he says here in verse 24 and 25. Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of who? Jesus. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of who? Jesus. So is, is, is the breaking of bread, is that a time to be inward focused? Or is that a time to be upward focused? It's a time to, to do it in remembrance of Jesus, not in remembrance of you and to, to be thinking about how sinful you are and how rotten you are and how not right you've been with God. That's not what I believe the breaking of bread is meant to symbolize. It's meant, it's meant for us to remember what Jesus Christ did for us and to give thanks for what he did for us. So the focus is not self, the focus is God. And you know, when you teach that you have to be worthy by your works, if you have sin in your life, you can't take part in the breaking of bread, what does it do? It pushes people away from the Lord's Savior, right? Because if you're humble enough, right, to realize that you're a sinner and that everybody has sin, you're not going to take of the bread and the cup if you have to be worthy by how, how, how sinless you are. And what it does is it should be a time where people come together and come to God. Come to the Lord's table. Remember what Jesus Christ has done for them. And when you teach that you have to be sinless in order to partake of the, Lord, of, of, of the breaking of bread, what does that do? It pushes people away. It pushes people away from God when it should be a time when it brings them to God. 